All right, so I've wanted to do this movie for a while, but I wasn't sure how to handle it. Uh, it's Jennifer's body. All right. Um, so when I went to see this movie in theaters in 2009, I was a bit disappointed because of the marketing. The marketing, like the trailers and the, the posters, told me I was getting something completely different than what this film was. Because the marketing, 20th Century Fox, decided to market this movie using Megan Fox's sex appeal. And because at the time, 2009, see I was in my early 20s at the time, prime age to be going goo goo gaga over Megan Fox. Well, we're the same age, but I'm a fat ass and she's gorgeous. So, going gaga is the furthest I'll ever get. But, uh, I mean, if she can get with Machine Gun Kelly, maybe I do have a chance. But anyway, uh, what was I? Uh, anyway, the marketing heavily seduced me, and that's the correct word, seduced me into going to movie theater to see something that's not what I saw. Because I thought I was going to get nudity and tits and be this weird sexual horror thriller. That's not what it is. It's actually a sort of female empowerment message kind of film. But not one that will come out nowadays where they're going to shove it down your throat and say that men are pigs. No, it, it's very subtle in that it's, it's, she's a succubus that goes after men because it's a female, so it goes after men. It's not saying, oh, men suck, so we're going to... If that, this came out nowadays, it would be all, fuck men, men suck, I'm just going to eat them. You know, but... I think they do a very good job. Diablo Cody, who wrote this, also wrote Juno, which I've never seen, never really interested in, but she did a very good job writing this film, I think. The dialogue, like, Hello Titty and uh, uh, Backdoor uh, Virgin, I like that shit. Um, I think Megan Fox does a decent job. I know people question her acting. She's fine in this. Better than the two Trent, but the first Transformers movie, she was... Huh. And in the second one, there's Michael Bay doesn't concentrate on his writing. We'll just say that. He was concentrating on something else, and that's the problem, is why we got the marketing for this film. But the story is that Jennifer centers around Jennifer and her best friend, Needy. And they kind of have this relationship one on opposite sides of the spectrum. Jennifer is the hot, popular girl, and Needy is the nerdy dork, even though she's played by the very attractive Amanda Seyfried, but they put her in glasses and frump her hair up, so she's ugly. I hate it when they do that. They take a, a beautiful woman and they frump her up to make her look, put her put less makeup on her, frump her hair and put on glasses, and she's a nerd. She's a less attractive nerd. I don't like that. I don't like that. Me. Look at it. Put me in a movie as the nerd. I'll do it. I got the glasses. I'm fat. You know? <clears throat> but, yeah. And so, the whole thing is that they go to this bar. And they see this band called Low Shoulder. And, uh, Needy over here hears them talking about Jennifer being a virgin. Which she stands up for her and says, yes, she is a virgin. Even though she's not. She's not even a backdoor virgin. You know, back door lover, coming up behind the lights down low. Back door lover. Sorry, just need to put the cats in the movie. Du jour. But, uh, and so they start singing this song. Through the trees, I will find you. Don't like it? Well, I played a million freaking times in this movie, so get used to it becomes the anthem of the goddamn movie, all right? Like, they play half the song here. 
And so what happens is, like, a fire starts. That's why I'm going to play half the song. And uh, so everyone runs out, and they somehow convince Jennifer. I guess you could say it's the, it's the you know, stress or it's in the moment. But they convince her to go in their van, and they take off. And she doesn't hear from, he doesn't hear from Jennifer for the rest of the night. And she shows up at her house and she's weird. She's puking up black goop. She's eating chicken and she's got a weird, you know, smile on her face. It's really weird. It's really creepy and it works. It's very effective. The gore in this film is pretty good, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of CGI usage, but it's done very well. It's very good CGI. For the most part. Um, and we know something's up. But the next day... Jennifer's just fine. And there's deaths and killings. It doesn't really matter much. Mostly men. But we do find out what happens. See, Nikolai, the leader, lead singer of Low Shoulder, is that uh, they're actually devil worshippers and they're going to sacrifice Jennifer because they think she's a virgin. And uh, so that they can get money and wealth and power and be famous because... They're petty. And even though she's not a virgin, it still works, which I feel like that doesn't make any sense. If you have to sacrifice a virgin, and if she's not a virgin, it wouldn't work. But they will be around. They still get famous, and she gets a suck. She turns into a succubus. And you can tell before this is even revealed that something's going on with this band because all of a sudden they're uber famous. Their song is the anthem of this whole fire situation. And it be becomes overdone to the point that even when Needy's trying to tell them the truth what actually happened, they don't believe her because they think these uh, this band is the king shit. So, yeah. Um. There, there is a lesbian kissing scene in this, which apparently Amanda Seif wasn't comfortable with. Megan Fox was because if you don't know her sexuality, she's kind of, she kind of goes both ways. Even Megan, even Megan, even Jennifer says that at the end. And, you know, at one point in time, I thought, you know, if she goes both ways, what was she killing both men and women? But I realized that's not the point. The point is that, uh, the point is that this is a female empowerment film, so that's why she's killing men. And the thing at the end where she says, I go both ways, she's going to kill Needy because she's trying to stop her. And it's a last resort. Because she does go both ways, but she doesn't have to. That's the point. She goes both ways, she doesn't have to, though. She doesn't have to, you know, label, her, label herself that. She can go out with men or she can go out with women, but she's choosing to go for men because she's a succubus. I think that's the message they're trying to send. If not, I don't know. Uh, and it's, it's really sad when Needy's boyfriend, Chip, dies because he was in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World and he was the uh, spray everything with bug spray guy from Boogeyman 2. He, he's the guy that dies by drinking the floor cleaner or, or whatever. Yeah. And it's sad when he dies here also because it's sad. Then there's a fight and he gets bit. And then we find well, that she gets bit later. But like, so the one thing that I don't like is the book ending of this film. Sort of. So when this film started, the first time I watch it, I'm like, well, we're doing this. Because it's that thing is, you know, someone's in some place and they go, Oh, look at the camera and they go, oh, hey, I bet you wonder how I got here. Well, you see, it all started when it's kind of that side of thing. Like Deadpool, Deadpool did it right, though, because it, it, it worked very well. And that works because Deadpool talks to the camera anyway. So that worked. At first, when I first saw this, I'm like, oh, we're doing this, really. But when they followed up at the end, so they do the end. Because they follow up so well. Beginning of this is like, oh, we're seeing, we know it's not going to work out. But then at the end, you find out that she, when she was bit, she got some powers transferred to her. And so she floats up, she breaks up, and she leaves. She gets picked up by an uncredited Lance Hendrickson. And then we see through the credits that she actually goes to the band and kills them. Now, I know this movie didn't make enough money to warrant one. 
But if I was making this movie, I would have left that for a sequel. What's she going to do? Is she going to go after the band? Now, thankfully, they didn't wait for a sequel. They just showed them dying during the credits so that we kind of have a full story. But you really don't know what's going to come next for Needy. You know? Uh, but who knows? Also, Kyle Gallner is in this, and he was in... He was the Smallville Flash, or Impulse. He was also in the god-awful Nightmare No Shit movie. He's one of the better things in that movie, though, I will say. Uh, performances are pretty good. Like I said, Megan Fox is okay. She's not the best actress. But Amanda Seyfried really kind of carries her in this film. And Johnny Miller, I think his name is, whatever his name is. The guy that plays Chip. He's all right. Uh, J.K. Simmons is in this. He has a work this cameo in here. With this ridiculous looking wig. It's just... Eh. Overall, this film is enjoyable. Like I said, I was disappointed when I first saw it. Because the marketing led me to believe it was something else. But I've grown to really like this film. Over the years. And really enjoy it. For what it is. And on that note. I'm going to give Jennifer's Body a 7 out of 10. I think it's decent. It's not the best. Megan Fox really doesn't have that spark anymore like she used to back in the day. You know, I've kind of gotten sick of her. But this works for me. 7 out of 10. She's going to ruin Ninja Turtles for me. So that's kind of when I went. Pfft. When she was announcing, like, hey, yeah. And then I watched the first one. And then I watched the second one. And I, eh. Like the second one, she didn't get no. No. She's just like, oh, hey, um. You're Baxter Stockman. It's like, okay, she's not even trying. But, yeah, this is when she was still kind of caring. And then from there, it went, Pfft, you know. But she put a lot of work into this for Fox to kind of screw Megan Fox out of it with, that, with the marketing. They actually wanted her to promote the film video on what, Pornhub or something. Yeah. Fox wanted her to do that. They really went for the sex appeal. Like, the first scene that they shot was the sh shot of her walking down the hallway. And that's what they showed to Fox. Because uh, the director, K Karen Kusama, Kusama, knew what Fox wanted to see. So, 20th Century Fox wanted to see. So that shows you what their mindset was going into this. They just wanted the sex appeal. They wanted to sell this movie with sex. And that kind of ruined it because people went to see this movie. And the people who went to see this movie, they called their friends and told them, hey, it's not what you think it is. It's not what they show you in the commercials. It's this, 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 and this. And they called their friends and their friends and their friends. And then just kind of dropped. And that's why it didn't work. Because once it was out... That it's not what it was advertised. People people who wanted to see what was advertised went, nope, and walked away. They should have advertised this movie as it was supposed to be advertised. And they probably would have gotten a better turnout. People knew what it was. Like myself, who was kind of disappointed. But i grown to like this film. Like I said, I get a 7 out of 10. It's enjoyable to watch. Every once in a while. Even a nice little flick to throw in. Get some good gore, some good kills. Stuff like that, you know? And it's not like she's totally... Like, there is some... Like, you see cleavage, and then you see her swimming in the water. You can't really see anything, but... She's still good to look at, naked or otherwise. So, what is your thoughts? What are your thoughts on Jennifer's body? Leave in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.